Hey friends, and welcome back to our nightly scripture reading. If you are new around here, welcome. I'm Dr. Sherry, and I developed something called the Mindset of the Redeemed. Well, it's an idea infused by the Holy Spirit, which essentially is all about teaching you how to think, feel, and do like the redeemed child of God you are. And how do you know what that means? How do you know what it means to be redeemed? How do you know what it means to be God's child? Well, we got to read his word. And so every night towards that end, I come on and I share scripture with you most nights since I've moved to YouTube. YouTube doing the nightly scripture reading. I do it live. Um, but today is pre recorded because I am going to be spending time again with family who's in town uh, from out of state. And so uh, towards that end, I went ahead and decided to pre record our message for today. Um, so before we get started, oh, by the way, we're reading Psalm 147 tonight, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I am not uh, going to read the whole thing tonight by the way. So we're actually going to read um, Psalm 147 verses 1 through 11 tonight. And uh, before we do, let me pray a blessing over the reading of God's word. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person watching now, each person who will watch, um, each person that you have brought here specifically to hear the word that you have for them tonight. We know your word is alive and powerful. We know that it's always speaking to us. And so in the moments when we feel like you're being quiet, um, I just pray, Lord, that you would invite us to meditate on your word, the word that is alive and active, so that we can hear you speaking. And so I just pray that you would speak to each person person's unique need through your word today in this psalm. And so we offer this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read, friends, Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good to sing praises to our God. How delightful and how fitting. The Lord is rebuilding Jerusalem and bringing the exiles back to Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the stars and calls them all by name. How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. The Lord supports the humble, but he brings the wicked down into the dust. Sing out your thanks to the Lord. Sing praises to our God with a harp. He covers the heavens with clouds provides rain for the earth, and makes the grass grow in mountain pastures. He gives food to the wild animals and feeds the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the strength of a horse or in human might. No, the Lord's delight is in those who fear him, those who put their hope in his unfailing love. All right, so uh, again, if you're new around here, what I do is I don't read this ahead of time. I don't, Hey, this isn't about having a, a lesson planned. This is just about, um, having a conversation. I know it's albeit one-sided, uh, having a conversation about what scripture is saying and what we can glean from it. And so we've already prayed a blessing over the reading of God's word. So let's see what he has to share with us, um, this evening. Today, for me, this evening, as you watch it. So here's the first thing that pops out to me is this verse one, which I think we overlook a lot. How good to sing praises to our God, how delightful and how fitting. Um, I believe in our humanness, um, which is not an excuse, by the way. This is uh, an opportunity to highlight that as an excuse. So in our humanness, we can say, well, it's not fitting to say praises to the Lord uh, when things aren't going well. Um, but actually, this doesn't qualify when we are supposed to sing praises to God. It says that we're supposed to sing praises to God because it's fitting. And when is it fitting? It, again, it doesn't qualify that. It's basically all the time. Not basically, it is all the time that it's fitting to praise the Lord. And I often challenge myself. It's a challenge that I'll invite you to. Um, that it's easy for us or maybe more natural feeling to say, praise the Lord when we get an answer to prayer, when something goes right, uh, or when somebody shares something exciting with us. But can we also say, bless the Lord, O my soul, which is praising him when things don't look 
like they're going in our favor, when things don't look good, when we get the bad news, when we get the bad report, um, I can honestly tell you it is something that I have been practicing. And for instance, when my Instagram account was hacked, that's just kind of like the most recent top of mind thing. Um, it seems like a really bad thing, right? I, I've even had people say, oh, I bet you've had a really tough week. And truthfully, no. Ha have there been some disappointing moments? Yeah, but they're moments. And they don't stick around. Why don't they stick around? Because I praise the Lord. Because I focus more on who the Lord is than what my situation says. And so even in this situation of an Instagram platform being hacked, and do I miss the people there? Absolutely. Do I miss being there? Do I miss ministering? Do I miss all the messages that I used to get? Absolutely. But even in that, I can say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, I will praise his name. It is fitting even in that, right? And that's just a minor thing. But it's fitting when we get the bad diagnosis. It's fitting when we don't have enough money in the account to pay the bill tomorrow. It's fitting. It is always fitting. So I challenge you. How do you personalize that for yourself? How do you embrace that for yourself? How do you say, I am going to choose to praise the Lord because it is fitting, not because he's worthy of it because of my circumstances. Okay. So that's the first thing that sticks out. And then the set, there's just probably two more things that I want to highlight here. So the second thing is this verse three, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the stars and calls them all by name. So I don't know if you know, but there's like a ton of stars. I don't even know how many stars there are, but there's a lot of them, but God counts them and he knows that they're there. He cares about them. Why? Because he put them there and he put them there for a purpose. So he can't, it's like, I can see God like taking inventory. Okay. There's, you know, like all the stars, right? Now it doesn't take him, but uh, even, not even a second to do that. He can just look and see all the stars and know all of them by name and say all of their names, you know, by himself in a moment. Uh, we can't grasp that because as it goes on to say, how great is our Lord? His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond our comprehension, right? But backing up, if God knows the names of all of the stars in the sky at any given time, right? Because he made them. Remember at the beginning when he created everything, we are his prized creation. We, he formed from the dust, everything else he spoke into existence, but humans, he formed us from the dust. Like he shaped us. He designed us. He molded, like we are his special uh, creation made in his image. Nothing else is made in his image, right? The stars aren't made in God's image. They are a reflection of him because he's the creator of them, but they weren't made in his image like we are. And so if he knows all the stars by name, then we back up and it says in verse three, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. And then we, we take that into account with what I was just talking about with, it is fitting to praise the Lord. So it is fitting to praise the Lord. Even if you don't feel like your brokenhearted has, like your broken heart has been held or mended, or you don't feel like your wound has been healed. That doesn't mean that it's not. It actually means that it is, and this is an opportunity for you not to think upon that which you feel or see, but instead to, as is fitting, think upon that which is true, which is what scripture says about who God is. And it says right here that he heals up, he bandages our wounds and heals the brokenhearted. That's who he is. And that's what it's time to start declaring over your life. Not the way you feel, Not, but I feel so lonely. No. God is close to the brokenhearted. He is with you. Like he is with you and he heals the brokenhearted all over scripture, right? It talks about he places the lonely in families. It talks about he is with you until the end of the age. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So you are never alone. So if you're relying on your feelings to dictate whether or not it's fitting to give praise because your situation feels lonely, then you can pretty much count on you're going to keep feeling that way. And you're not going to give, it's not that you limit God, but you're going to limit your experience of God because you're not going to see him as healer because you're depending on your feelings and what you see to dictate what's supposed to happen in your life. And he's saying, he, it, the psalmist is calling us here to find it fitting to praise the Lord, to declare who he is. That's what praise means to approve of. So to declare who he is. So pick up your Bible in times, especially in times of hardship and declare the truth 
over your feelings and what you see. And then the last thing that I want to leave with you here is um, this verse eight and nine. He covers the heavens with clouds, provides rain for the earth. He makes the grass grow. Like, I know we might think we do that because like we water it or we put fertilizer on it or whatever. But the truth is we don't make anything grow. God makes it grow. Um, my garden is kind of evidence of that. It's kind of a bust this year. It's kind of weird. Like I have random seeds that popped up and then others didn't pop up at all. Right. But that's up to the Lord. All I can do is plant it and water it, but whether or not it grows doesn't depend on me. Right. So this is the same for everything in our life. Everything that we have um, is a consequence of the Lord. How great is he? How beyond how he has absolute power, how beyond our ability to com comprehend is he? Um, and he gives food to all the animals and feeds the young ra ravens, right? Like he provides Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. Reminds me of that old worship song. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. You know that one? If you don't look it up, that's a good one. Um, and then the last thing I want to leave you with is this. I know I said three things, but really it's four. Verse 11. No, the Lord's delight is in those who fear him, those who put their hope in his unfailing love. So dear one, stop putting your hope in people. Stop putting your hope in things of the earth where scripture says moth and rust destroy. Stop putting your hope in your bank account. Stop putting your hope in your spouse. Stop putting your hope in your children to satisfy you. If you're putting your hope in anything, we keep talking about this. It's like a repeated thing. If you're putting your hope in anything to satisfy you or feel you, fill you, you're not going to be filled. Scripture says that those who hunger and thirst for the Lord, for righteousness, they will be filled, right? So if you want to be filled, seek the Lord first um, and do it diligently and it says the Lord's delight, his blessings, his prospering is on those who fear him, on those who put their hope in his unfailing love. So dear one, put your hope in God's unfailing love. That's it. Put your hope in his unfailing love, not in your feelings, not in what you see. If you are facing a hard situation, open up God's word and declare it until you do feel it. I love what Priscilla Schreier says. She says, your feelings are catch up. There's truth in that. Depend upon the word of God and remember that he blesses all those who put their hope in him. So hope in him tonight, friends. Let me pray over the word and then we'll sign off. Heavenly Father, I give you praise for the opportunity to read your word for the platform of YouTube, YouTube, for all of the technology that works on our behalf to be able to bring the word of God. You won't be foiled. You won't be stopped. Your plan can't be foiled. Um, and so we look to you. We, we trust in you and we find it very fitting in every circumstance to give you praise. So thank you for the opportunity to do that. We love you, Lord. You are all powerful. You are all knowing. You are all present and you are all comforting in our deepest need. It's in Jesus name. We thank you. Amen. All right, friends, I will see you around the way uh, tomorrow for our nightly scripture reading tomorrow night, probably around 8, 15, 8, 20 p.m. Eastern time. All right, friends.